So if you guys have been watching my videos before, you know they usually focus on some sort of global issue or social, cultural issue, something that affects people's lives or affects the world as a whole. So with that in mind, um, I started researching and looking for ideas for this video, and I happened to come across the idea of food waste. So that's a, what I want to talk to you guys about is food waste. And food waste is any food that is either lost or discarded or goes uneaten that was previously edible. So with this in mind, I started researching away, looking into different sectors and markets and the different places that this could be affected. And as globally as a whole, what regions of the world have more food waste? And again, in what areas do they have food waste? Where does it come from? Does it come from agricultural problems, you know, inefficiencies, transportation network, their logistics poor, or is it a socio-cultural thing where people just waste more food themselves on an individual level? So with this in mind, again, I was looking and researching, and I saw something really interesting happening in France, and I decided to delve into that and start researching more. So this guy named Arash Dungraf, he's a congressman in France, came up with this big petition, and it basically outlined a new law that he wanted to get pushed. And what this law said, in a nutshell, is that all grocery stores in France can't throw away their food just because it's past the best buy date. And all the grocery stores have to contractually be obligated to a charity or a food bank to give their food away once it's past this date. Because traditionally, the French had been throwing it away past the state and dumping bleach on it to stop anybody from eating it. So this got passed around thousands of signatures just in a couple days. Took it to the House National Assembly in France back in November, and it passed unanimously. And then after that, took it to the, the House Parliament. Again, passed unanimously back in December. So in February, it actually came into effect and we've yet to see the, back, the backlash, the whiplash effect from this decision yet. It's interesting to, um, to try to guess what exactly what will happen in the future to project the effects of this on an economic scale, you know, logistically, socioculturally. There's more to it than just how simple this law is. Um, even logistically for, for the grocery stores, now that they have to give this food away, is there a way for them to push the best buy date farther back? Is there legal ramifications to this? Is there more risk to this to, for them selling this food that's potentially bad now? Or do they, do they compromise their, their quality by selling this food? Um, also, the, there's a time scale that they're working on. Do they try to expedite the food from their whole supply chain to get to the grocery store faster. And all the way back from the producers, transporting to the manufacturers, transporting to the wholesalers, and then to the retail stores. Um, if they expedite this process, then it's gonna cost them more money. If it's gonna cost them more money, then that means the food prices are gonna have to go up. Food prices go up, consumers change what they buy and when they buy it. Also, the consumers might change what they buy or when they buy it seasonally now because the again the supply chain might change to how fast this food can come in and they, the stores might realize that the consumers are changing what they buy because the food might be going bad sooner and now these consumers have a somewhat of a moral justification even if it's uh, conscious or unconscious that now that it's close to this best buy date that I shouldn't even bother with it. I should just get the freshest thing possible because then I'm taking food out of the mouths of, you know, these these homeless people or whoever's getting it from the food bank. You know, because as soon as it gets past the state, it's going straight to them. So even the food banks logistically are gonna have to adjust because they're not used to having all this food readily available. And um, it's a large influx and it's gonna cause a change in their, their, in, their entire infrastructure. And, and, and more specifically, just for this, logistically, they're, not, they're gonna have to put in a lot of manpower, a lot of time, and they're gonna, make sh they're gonna have to make sure that they have like trucks and supplies to come and get this. And the grocery stores themselves are gonna have to set aside more time to make sure that everything's placed nicely and is able to transport to these food charities that have to pick it up and move it on and so on and so forth. 
So it's interesting to think about that. And as this is going on, um, people become more subconscious about food waste as a whole. If it's just affecting this sector, maybe it'll affect another sector and another sector. You know, food isn't just isolated to grocery stores. There's also restaurants, individual, individual households as well. So um, there's talk of a new law about restaurants that have to give out to-go boxes now. You can't, they can't say no. So this will minimize food waste there. Maybe there's other food waste that they have to have under a certain amount, a percent, or there's legal ramifications. Who knows? And individuals, perhaps, themselves become more introspective. And will think about how much do we, do we waste ourselves if the grocery store has legal problems? You know, maybe we will. I seriously doubt laws will be passed about individual consumerism because it's, it's good for the economy. And if it's good for the economy... I seriously doubt there's there's a, there's that a big question because if this takes away from GDP if people stop buying more from the grocery store because they're introspective or grocery stores are forced to change the way they handle business then the pool of money being put into the economy is going to change so maybe these laws won't spread as far but if we're thinking on an economic scale we want to think economically then it makes sense for these laws to be passed. So it's really interesting to, to try to project what exactly will happen for these. However, I do know that the European Union is, is talking to Arash right now, and he's trying to push that through, and the French government's trying to push this through to get it to spread to all of Europe. If it spreads to all of Europe, then West is likely to follow, then the US will probably follow, and so on and so forth. So it's interesting to think about how exactly the logistics, the economy, and then socio-culturally, how this one law, seemingly meaningless, can affect so much about food waste. So I hope you guys learned a little bit. I know it's a lot of information and compacted and a lot of ideas being, being uh, spouted out, but again, it's just so interesting to think about how the markets will be affected from something so small. It's a, it's a domino effect and we're gonna see the effects within the next couple of years.